Hey guys, welcome to week five of Books Being Sick. I am Nick. This is going to be a more fun one, I think, because I have book pickups to show you. I'm very, very excited about all of these. I am always excited uh, to buy a book and to share share books that I've picked up, but this stack in particular is just one that I, it's one of those ones, you know what I mean? Like I've, all these are all books that I genuinely am very excited to read. I kind of had a moment this week where books were being recommended to me. I found some new channels, some new creators, some new books that I'd never heard of uh, being thrown at me and like, you know, their descriptions and all that. And I have, I'm just like, I'm in that like jazzy kind of like, ooh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to get into this. So yeah, very pumped on this stack of books. Um, it is another awful day here uh the sun is gone i so i was actually looking at an article saying that where i live we've only seen 30 hours of sunlight this winter so it's been pretty dismal <laughs> pretty pretty drab pretty you know what i mean eh? so it's it's not like uh it's not good <laughs> i've been having a lot of vitamin d you know i don't know how much you're supposed to have i think i read a thing where you know you can you can't re really have too much vitamin d but i'm i'm not sure if that's true or not cuz your body just like stores it and just kind of releases it as needed that i don't know if that's true but you know uh anyway so i feel fine you know the vitamin d has been helping but i wish we could see the sun i um i just ugh. been reading a lot of sad books too so that's not helping First, I'm going to start with, before we get into the book pickups and all that, I'm going to talk about a book that I actually read uh, that is on the stack here, and this is Small Things Like These by Claire Keegan. Now, this book really caught me by surprise. This came on recommendation from Jack in the Books, who's here on BookTube. I'm pretty new to BookTube. I don't really, um, I, I actually haven't really watched a lot of BookTubers, to be, to be honest with you. I It's just, uh, it just hasn't happened yet, but Jack in the Books is one who I uh, really enjoy. Got a great voice, you know what I mean? Seems like a really nice dude. And uh, one thing that I really like about him, and kind of similarly what I like about all content creators that I like, is that they, he, it just seems very genuine. You know what I mean? He's not like, he's not like coming at you, you know, like buy this. Uh, he just, he's kind of just telling you how he feels about books. And I, uh, I kind of just think I can really trust his his recommendations. So he said that Claire Keegan is one of the most consistent authors that he reads in terms of quality. She only has, I believe, four books, and they're all quite short. But I was very excited um, to hear his recommendation on this because he sounded very jazzed on it. So I went and picked up small things like these, came home, it was snowing. It was awful out, as I just mentioned, made a tea and read this. And I thought it was kind of perfect because on this cover here, it is snowing. So I was like, okay, well, let's get in the mood here. Read the whole thing. Again, it's not very long. It's just over 100 pages. And one of the greatest things that I've ever read. I, I genuinely, genuinely really, really love this. This is one of those books where I'm anytime anybody asks me, what's something I can read? I'm kind of new to reading or I'm an experienced reader. Like, what, what just throw something at me that you recommend. This might be the, the go-to because incredible. I got the same fulfillment out of this 100 page book that I've gotten out of seven, eight, 900 page books, thousand page books. There's just something to her writing that is, uh, there's a brevity to her writing that is very enjoyable. You know what I mean? There's nothing there that you don't need, but you still are getting the same sort of coziness and, and vibiness of the characters and the setting. Awesome. Awesome. Awesome book to give you a kind of brief description on what it's about. It's the mid 1980s, small Irish town. We're following our main guy, Bill Furlong, and he kind of works at a coal factory delivering coal to all the homes and businesses in the city to keep them warm. Christmas is coming. The snow is coming. And he finds something out through his job through one of his deliveries that kind of forces him to confront his future and how he wants to be remembered as a person really and 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 also makes him confront his past as well it is uh beautiful it is really really beautiful i kind of just sat there for a bit with a big smile on my face just like man that was good <laughs> you know what i mean I, I just really really liked it and and on uh Unknown to me, this has actually been made into a movie that is not out yet, but apparently comes out quite soon. I want to say in the next four weeks. Um, and it stars Killian Murphy as Bill Furlong. And I think that is perfect. Right off the B, I'm like, yes. When I think of a when when I think of like a 40-ish year old coal working, driving a trolley, making delivery, <laughs> kind of like small Irish town guy, yeah, 
Killian Murphy. Perfect. Perfect casting. I cannot wait to see that. Uh, to, funny enough, as I was reading this, I was like, as short as it is, this, I feel like, would make a pretty incredible movie. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, Claire Keegan might be one of my new favorites. So, uh, definitely check that out if you haven't. I, I really, can again, cannot recommend that one enough. I just really, truly loved it. Going on to the stack here, I might just keep the train rolling here on the... Uh, we're going to go... Get rid of that one, get rid of that one, get rid of that one. We'll keep it going with Claire. I was so hyped on small things like these that I went out and bought two of her other books. I couldn't find the fourth one. I'm actually not even quite sure what the fourth one is called. But Foster is one that a lot of people are saying. I'm going to pop that up there. Foster is one that a lot of people are saying is her best book by far. And this is, you know, rings in at about 95 pages. Again, very, very short, all things considered. But powerful and cannot uh, cannot wait to I'm, I'm probably going to read this today as soon as i'm done this video i'm probably going to go sit somewhere and just try and read this whole thing because uh, i just i'm craving that feeling of uh what i felt after reading uh, small things like these so foster is one of the pickups that i picked up <laughs> uh i just i'm so excited you know what i mean i just cannot wait not a clue what this one's about i'm gonna go in completely blind but just to let you know most people do seem to say that foster is her best work so far and she also has a brand new one that a lot of again those same people are saying is just incredible uh this just came out it's so late in the day by claire keegan i'll show that one there and as you're probably noticing the consistency in the covers here is something that i just love uh this is just such a such a nice such a nice set to look at um i feel like i kind of wanted to display these face out somewhere because uh yeah just real nice one other note on small things like these i have a feeling i'm probably going to feel the same way about these other two this hands down is going to be an annual read for me i'm going to read this every year maybe maybe even twice a year you know it's very manageable with its size but just i loved it that much every winter i'm going to read this absolutely okay Thank you for letting me gush about that. We are going to move on here. Um, I, I, as you can see here, I did pick up quite a few books. I've had a lot of hobbies in my life, and when I go to spend money on those certain hobbies, it's it's always felt kind of, I always feel guilty, you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, I'm buying another record, I'm buying another sports card, <laughs> kind of an embarrassing one, but... Um, Books, you know, as I still feel that guilt, but there, there's at least that part of me that's like, it's books, it's smart people stuff, it's you know, it's just, you know, everybody's looking at me like, oh, look at that guy reading, reading, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I've always tried to like justify it in that way. I don't know if you guys are too, but uh, buying buying books feels okay. However, that being said, I bought way too many, and I gotta go on some sort of uh, cleanse here. <laughs> so we're gonna hold off on the uh, on the purchases for. I, I, I say that, but you know, probably maybe the next time I go to the bookstore, I'll be like, never mind. I don't know. Okay, we'll go through these here. Uh, this is one that I've just wanted to read for a long time. I. I believe uh, I saw the movie about 10, 15 years ago when it came out. One of my, one of the coolest, uh, best, well, most well-made things I've ever seen. So I cannot wait to read the book here, and that is Never Let Me Go. Um, this is a, uh, this is one of those books that makes the rounds on the, on the socials. People saying that it is absolutely incredible. So I cannot wait to dive into Never Let Me Go. And to be honest with you, I can't really even quite remember the movie. It's been a, it's been a while since I've seen it. So I'm, I'm happy to kind of go into this somewhat blind. Um, that has never let me go. Very, very pumped for that. There is a creator here on BookTube. Uh, oh, I, or I already mentioned, mentioned him actually. Jack in the Jack in the books. Man, that guy I'm really loving. And he recommended Mayflies by Andrew O'Hagan. This seems uh, to be. Look at this cover, by the way. That as a photographer. I just really love that. <laughs> really love that cover. Um, this is a coming-of-age story, from what I gather. And uh, from what I understand, the first half of this is them as kind of in their youth, a group of friends in their youth, their teenage years. Um, and then it kind of jumps 30 years ahead. So excited to see what this is all about. Again, Jack and the Book seemed very, very hyped on this one. Um, this is one of those ones where if I had just seen the cover at the store, I might have just bought it anyways. But Mayflies. Looking forward to Mayflies. Moving right along. This is definitely one that you've heard of. I've never read it. It was really popular when I was in high school. But again, just uh, never got to it because I didn't read. <laughs> and that is Perks of Being a Wallflower. Um, I thought this was a pretty cool cover. I'm not a huge fan of the 20th anniversary sticker there, but... Oh, sorry, 20th anniversary edition with a new letter from Charlie. 
don't know who Charlie is, but I'm looking forward to reading this book. Um, again, it's just kind of one of those ones I feel like you're supposed to read. It's uh, it's become a classic, and everybody that I've I know that's read it has said it's it's incredible. So, um, yeah, that's another one. Moving right along. Now, I was looking for. I don't know if you guys have ever read Toni Morrison. I haven't. And to be honest with you, similarly to Claire Keegan, I, I had not heard of Toni Morrison. I had not heard of Claire Keegan. Again, I'm very new to the book world, so a lot of these people, I'm, I'm learning of their existence for the first time. And I heard that the book Sula by Toni Morrison is just incredible. So I was looking for Sula and then kind of did a little searching online. And a lot of people seem to say that if you're going to read your first Toni Morrison book, you should read The Bluest Eye. So I picked up The Bluest Eye and I'm just so, so pumped to read it. People will seem to just absolutely love this one and love all of Toni Morrison's books. Um, so I'm going to read this, and then I might read Beloved, and then I might read Sula, or I might read Sula after this if I can find it. They actually didn't have a copy. Um, so, yeah, uh, one of those ones, I, I have not a clue what this is about, but the, the people recommending it are just people that I trust. So can't wait to read Toni Morrison. Moving right along here, this is another creator who I believe is just on... I'll take him below, but his name is Brady of Brady's Bookshelf. Um, he reads a lot of classics, and I really, really like his account. He's very, he seems just very honest with his reviews, similarly to Jack in the Books. And he reads Dostoevsky. I hope I said that right. Everybody always gets mad at me for saying that name wrong. but um, And he also reads a lot of Tolstoy. And he was kind of saying that he loves them both, but Tolstoy is a little bit more digestible, a little more manageable for people getting into classics. And I had every intention of reading Dostoevsky this year. I might, and I might still, I really want to re read the Brothers Karamazov, but I'm going to maybe start with Anna Karenina. I found this really beautiful Penguin, this is Penguin Classics, right? I think, copy of it. Um, just how could I not? <laughs> the other copy of this was brutal, actually. It was so, oh my gosh, I wish I could share a photo of it on here. It was it was awful. It was really, really bad. So I'm really happy that they had this one. And this is a really chunky book, but I cannot wait to uh, dive into this one and see what it's all about, you know? Um, get into some Russian classics, Russian literature, you know? So, yeah, never read Tolstoy, but, uh, you know, I think it'd be kind of sick to read a Tolstoy and a Dostoevsky this year. So that is the, that I'm going to say that's the plan right now. We've only got one more here. Then the video's over. Week five of books being sick. Oh my gosh. Wow. Um, the last one here is The Beasting by Paul Murray. I'm going to throw that up there. Kind of a cool minimalistic cover. Uh, I quite like that, even though I'm kind of more of a maximalist. Is that the word? I like stuff. You know what I mean? I just, I love stuff. I want to walk into my home and just see knickknacks. <laughs> um, the Beasting is why I, I, have, I have not a clue what this is about. Highly recommended by quite a few people. I believe this is an Irish book. And uh, likewise, you know, Claire Keegan is an Irish author, and I believe Andrew O'Hagan, yeah, is definitely an Irish author. So, so a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of uh, that region coming into my my bookshelves lately. Lately, so this is uh, recommended by Denise at the bookstore that I went to. Denise, I talked to at the counter and said, you know, a lot of dark humor. The first half of this kind of follows um, the children, and then the second half follows the adults. She said, seemed to say that it really kind of gets going when you start following the adult story. I can't wait to read this. A lot of people who have read it, I've, I say that about all these books, but it's just, I just feel like there's a real good chance it's going to be good, <laughs> based on the recommendations. So uh, this, is, um, this is The Beasting by Paul Murray, and that's what I picked up. And that is really all I've got going on. I'm currently reading... The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon by Stephen King. I'm nearly finished that one. Really enjoying it. Really enjoyable short uh, short little book there. Um, and yeah, and then I'm like I said, I'm hopefully going to get in some Claire Keegan today. That's all I got. That's all I got. Okay. Whew. Man, I was like a little sweaty after these. Thank you so much.